the dash. Over the last couple weeks, we've been talking about, man, how do you really live a life and live in a way that you live for what lasts? That's the kingdom of God. We've been looking at our vision as a church and how you can invest, man, part of your life into the kingdom of God through the local church, this church family. And so we talked about your 5.26, this 1% of your awake hours, over just over five hours a month, if you were to invest that into serving and, and investing here in, in at Adventure Church, the difference it could make. We've seen, I think, close to 50 people at this time join teams in the last couple of weeks. But as you know, we have a bigger goal than that. And so if you still are kind of on the sidelines, just let me encourage you, man, invest part of your dash into that. I promise you, it'll make a huge difference, not only in the lives of others, but in your life as you get on a team. And then we talked about getting in a group and the, the, the purpose and, and that your life is more meaningful when you have authentic community. And man, if we really wanna live a life that makes a difference, we need accountability in our life. It's, it's hard to do it alone, but man, it's easier when we can link arms with other people and they have the, the, the opportunity and the permission to, to call you out when you need called out and to encourage you and lift you up when you need encourage. It's the power of the local church. And today, we wanna continue in this and talk to you about being a bridge builder when it comes to connecting people who are far from God with Jesus. You see, our world is full of people who are seeking fulfillment. They're searching for purpose, but many of them, most of them, are searching and seeking in all the wrong places. And as Christ followers, we have the opportunity and the responsibility, the command from our Lord and Savior to be those who build bridges for people to help them discover new life in Christ, to help them discover the life that God has created them to live. And our community here in Delaware County, sometimes it can seem like there's not a lot of need. And people often present, you know, on their social media and in their interactions with you that their life is perfect and everything's all together just going well. But but what's happening behind the scenes is we know in our community many are battling an addiction. Mentally are, many are fighting depression and mental health issues and anxiety and suicide is at record highs. There's, the divorce rate is continuing to, to climb and marriages and families are being splintered and, and impacted in negative ways and people are searching for answers, they're searching for hope, they're searching for help and I man, how do I navigate this, how do I get through this? And our world offers them some temporary escapes from their problems, from the issues they face, but that's all they are, they're escapes, but come on, the church of Jesus Christ has an eternal solution to what they're going through. We have a hope that can only be found in Jesus. People are literally existing in a living hell and you have the chance to lead them to an eternal life in heaven. The responsibility that God has given us. And here at this church and as we have grown from a church plant 10 years ago and established ourselves about eight months ago in this building, hard to believe it's been eight months that we've been in this space and the big part of this move and the investment of the resources and time and energy was to create and to, to remove the challenges that limited our capacity to reach the lost people in our community. That is why this building exists. Sure, it's afforded us other things and opportunities and ways to minister and to grow as a family, but, but the reason, let me just remind you again, we built this building that we enlarged our capacity so that we could reach lost people who are far from God people who are helpless and hurting and need hope, and here we are with the answer. And so we've done our part to eliminate those, those challenges, to enlarge our capacity, and now all we need is you. Look at your neighbor and say, we need you. We need you. There's a picture here I wanna throw up on the screen. Uh, anybody know what this is? This is Sanibel Island, the causeway that connected the mainland of Florida to Sanibel Island. Uh, after Hurricane Ian went through. And you can see in multiple places where it just flooded the, the bridge and the roadway there and, and literally made it impossible for people who were on the island to get back to where 
the, the mainland or vice versa by that road, by that stretch of highway, by those bridges, and they were literally going and getting people by boat to get them off of the island. And as I was thinking about this message this week, this bridge builder thing just kept popping up, this idea that you and I have the opportunity to bridge the gap for people, that many people in our community, man, they they know that they're searching for something, they know that there's something out there that they're seeking, that they're searching for, they just don't know how to get there. That the bridge has been broken in some way in their life and maybe that's been because of fear or, of, or, or judgment or rejection. But for some reason they know the church is there but, but there's just a gap between where they are and, and where the church is and it's broken. And you and I according to scripture have this opportunity to be bridge builders for lost people that our lives and our relationships with them can build a bridge from where they are, fill the gap, and lead them to where Jesus is. We believe that God has called our church to be a place where people can find Jesus. Because when they find Jesus, they're gonna find what they're searching for. Everyone here has a chance to be a bridge between someone who's lost in your life, someone who's hurting and, and, and seeking something that you have an opportunity to be the one who bridges the gap for them. Again, the gap could be filled with fear of the unknown, fear of judgment, fear of rejection, so many other things. And how cool would it be for you and for me to be the one that that leads them to a place of meeting Jesus? See, it's easy to think that that it's my responsibility, that those who are, you know, you know, pastors or leaders in the church, who work in the church, hey, that's kind of your thing to do that. But according to Paul, we all have this opportunity. Second Corinthians 5, 18 through 20 says this, and all of this a gift from God, he's talking about salvation, who brought us back to himself through Christ, and God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. You see, what he's saying here is that God built the bridge for you. Jesus, the cross of Jesus Christ, bridged the gap between you and God. That now you can have right relationship with God because of what Jesus has done for you. But then he says, but now you get to be the one who who is, is building bridges for others. He said, For God was in Christ reconciling the world, no longer counting people's sins against them, and he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. How many of you believe that the gospel is still the good news? It's still the good news, friend. It's still the news that people need to hear. It's still the message that that Jesus is proclaiming. It's, It's still the way, the truth, and the life. He says this is, we have this wonderful message that the world does not have, but God has, the church has. And he says this, so we are Christ's ambassadors. We are his representatives. And think about this. God is making his appeal through us. You see, Jesus left this world, friend, but he empowered you with his spirit. And once you receive Christ into your life, You've now been commissioned as an ambassador. You think about that in our, in, our, in our government, right? That we send ambassadors to other countries to represent our country and our values and our beliefs and our message. And Paul's saying you've been sent into your neighborhood, into your workplace, into your families, into your circles of influence with a wonderful message of reconciliation. That God is making his appeal through you. And I believe that the dash of our life, our time and our effort and our energy is best invested in people. Why? Because people are the only thing that make it to heaven. Your career, your retirement, your bank accounts, all of that stuff, your homes, your vacations, none of that stuff makes it into heaven. None of that stuff has eternal value. But man, the kingdom of God is about the souls of humanity and we have an opportunity to play a part in seeing souls of lost people find the fulfillment they're searching for, find the freedom they're looking for in Christ Jesus. As I was thinking through 
the Bible with this bridge builder idea in mind. A couple bridge builders kind of stood out among many who built bridges for people to come meet Christ. And one of them, we don't even have her name, and one was a disciple that really never found himself in the spotlight amongst the 12, but yet made a tremendous difference in the kingdom of God. Today, I want to tell you, you don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be a biblical scholar, some kind of super Christian to be a bridge for people to meet Jesus. In fact, there was a Samaritan woman known as the the woman at the well in Scripture, and Jesus is literally about to launch his public ministry, and he stops at this well. I'd encourage you to go to John chapter four and read her whole story today, but this woman was there to to get water, and she has this encounter with Jesus that is quite remarkable. And Jesus makes it clear to her through kind of telling very intimate details of her life to her and kind of saying, hey, the reason I know this is because I'm God, and the water that you're really looking for to quench the thirst that you have. You've had five husbands and you know they didn't fill the, the thirst of your heart and the things of this world will never satisfy you. But I'm, I, I'm telling you that once you drink of me, you'll never be thirsty again. And he has this encounter and she knows she's just encountered the Messiah. And it says this, that, that after this encounter with Jesus in verse 28, that the woman left her jar beside the well and she ran back to the village, telling everyone, come and see. Come on, everybody say that with me, come and see. It's really that simple, we're gonna talk more about it. Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. That's what she's saying. He knew stuff about me that only God would know about me. You gotta come see this guy who's, who's, who's done this. Could he possibly be the Messiah? And it says, so the people came streaming from the village to see him. As I was reading that this week, I just got this picture in my mind. Man, if we could just be people who would say, come and see. And if all of us did that, man, could people be streaming into our parking lot and through these doors? Come and see this man who I think is... I'm a son of God, right? And then if you skip ahead in verse 39, it says this, many, everybody say many. Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because of what the woman had said. He told me everything I ever did. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in their village. So he stayed two more days, long enough for many more to hear his message and many more to come to believe. Then they said to this woman, now we believe not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard him for ourselves. Now we know that he indeed is the savior of the world. What did she do? She had an encounter with Jesus and she went back and told people about it. Andrew, the disciple, another bridge builder, a little bit of his story as he meets Jesus. It says this in John chapter one, verse 35, the following day, John was standing, this is John the Baptist, standing with two of his disciples. And as Jesus walked by, John looked at him and declared, look, there is the Lamb of God. When John's two disciples heard this, they were like, whoa, what did he just say? So they started to follow Jesus. Jesus looked around and saw them following and he said, what do you want? They replied, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Here's what Jesus said, come and see Come and see. He says about four o'clock in the afternoon and they went with him to a place where he was staying and they remained with him the rest of the day. Andrew, here's the key here, was Simon Peter's brother. Peter was the one that Jesus anointed as the, the rock of his church, the foundation of his church. And you know the story of Peter. He ends up denying Christ then Jesus is resurrected from the dead, comes back, reaffirms Peter's calling. Peter is the apostle who stands up on the day of Pentecost and launches the church that you and I are a part of today. That's the Peter here. So Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men, heard what John had said and followed Jesus. Look what Andrew did. Andrew went to find his brother. 
We have found the Messiah. I've encountered him for myself. I've had an experience with the Messiah. Then Andrew did what? Brought Simon to meet Jesus. And as soon as Simon gets there, looking intently at him, Jesus said, your name is Simon, son of John, but not anymore. You're going to be called Cephas, which means the rock. And as we know, would go on to be the rock of the church that you and I are a part of today. So two things we can learn in this, these stories from what it means to be a bridge builder, and they're very simple, very easy to live out, and I hope today this will challenge you and inspire you and help equip you to better be a bridge builder to the lost in your life. The first thing you gotta be willing to do is very simple. You gotta be willing to share your story. You just have to share your story. Andrew and the Samaritan woman Right, they, they had this conversion experience. They had this encounter with Jesus and, and it changed them. We don't know all the details, especially about uh, Andrew's encounter because it says he just went and he hung out with Jesus for the rest of the day, but something happened in that encounter that he goes, this is no doubt the Messiah. This is the one that we've been preparing for, praying about. These are Jewish boys. They've heard about the Messiah and he goes, this is it. And the first thing he thinks of, I gotta go tell my best friend. I gotta go tell, I gotta tell my brother. Because we've talked about this, we've talked about this moment, and, and, and I found it. The Samaritan woman as well, right? She has this encounter with Jesus, and, and it's very clear to her that through what Jesus is saying to her and, and how he tells intricate details and intimate details of her life that, that, that he is the Son of God, and she goes, I've had this experience, and what did she do? She just went back and she shared her story. But here's the deal. You can't give away what you don't have. You can't share what you haven't experienced yourself. And today I wanna ask you just a very direct question. Are you saved? Have you had an encounter like this with Jesus? That when you encountered him, you knew without a doubt, man, I just met the son of God. I just had an encounter and experience with God and that experience, man, did something inside of you that changed the way you view the world, that changed the way you live your life, that, that man, once you, you found Jesus, that literally the old you was gone, the new you had come and, and your whole life had been changed. Friend, have you had an encounter with Jesus because we can see clearly that Andrew, man, there was an excitement and joy about experiencing Jesus. This Samaritan woman, right, that, that she just had this thing. She had five husbands. She was searching for fulfillment in all the wrong places. She had an encounter. Man, she knew that she met Jesus and she couldn't help but run back and tell other people about it. Have you had an encounter with Jesus? that gives you a story that's worth sharing? Or is it, yeah, I kinda just go to church every now and then. Yeah, we're trying to get more involved. Yeah, it, it, you know, when, when we can, we, we go, and you know, when we can, I, I try to, I try, I try, I try, but, but have you had an encounter with Jesus? And friend, I'm not here to condemn you, I'm not here to try to shame you, I'm here to tell you that if you have it, you can. And you can have it today. Because all you have to do is have the faith to believe and to receive and to open your life up to him. And if you do that, he says he stands at the door and knocks. And if you'll open the door, you'll have a meeting with Jesus. That you can experience a transformation of your life that gives you a story that you can't help but to tell someone else about. Maybe you would say, yeah, I know Jesus. And Man, I used to have joy like that, right? Come on, if you were to be honest with you, Jesus even talks about this in Revelation. He says, you gotta, you gotta always go back to your first love. Keep going back to the time that it was this fresh for you. Because can we just be honest that, that over the years we can become kind of stagnant Christians, stale Christians, and then the ones who get bitter and judgmental, I call them crusty Christians. It's just crusty, dude, right? That you need to get some joy back in your salvation. That's where in Psalm 51, 
David, the man after God's own heart, this is after he was confronted by the prophet nation for committing murder and adultery, right? David is saying, man, I've tried sin and sin never satisfies. And friends, for some of you, you believe in Jesus, but what you've done is, is you're still seeking and searching for fulfillment in anything but him. And sin, if you're seeking sin as fulfillment, you're seeking the next home and the next promotion and more money in your bank account, friend, you're just gonna keep coming up empty. And you may be a Christian, but you're gonna be a crusty one. And you're gonna be stagnant and stale in your life and there's gonna be no joy to your salvation and you're not gonna share your story because you would go, you know what? If I was you, I wouldn't wanna be a Christian like me. That's the only difference between me and you, is that I actually know how to find the fulfillment I'm looking for, and yet I'm still seeking for another place. That's where David was, right? He had had this encounter with God, he's anointed as king, and yet he fell into temptation. He, he sleeps with Bathsheba, he murders her husband to try to cover it up, right? And he's confronted with his sin, and look what he says. He says, oh God, create in me a clean heart. Renew a loyal spirit in me. Do not banish me from your presence. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. He's saying, God, take me back. Take me back to where we first started. God, when I was passionate about you, when I was singing to you, worshiping you, when you were the focus of my life, take me back. And he says this, verse 12, restore to me, God, the joy of your salvation. He says, and when I get that joy, man, make me willing to obey you. And he says, and when I know that when I have that type of encounter with you again, I'm going to tell other people how to return to you. So today, if you're stale, if you're stagnant, if there's sin in your life, it's, it's just repentance. It's just saying, God, forgive me for my apathy. Forgive me for, for seeking fulfillment in other places, God. Turn back to Jesus, get back to living a life of purpose, living on purpose, living your dash for what's going to matter. And living your dash for Christ is the only thing that lasts. And so you just need to ask God to return to you the joy of your salvation, make you passionate again about the things of God. Come on, how many of you just want to get so close to Jesus again that when you get around people, they just know you were with them? That there's just a grace about you, a peace about you, a love about you that they just go, what's different about you? It comes from being close to God. It comes by coming to him and saying, God, do this for me. But, but maybe for some of you, it's not that you allowed sin or you're focusing your time and energy and searching for other things. For some of you, if you were just to be honest, your heart is hardened towards lost people. We spend more time as a church collectively being known for what we're against than what we're for. And lost people want nothing to do with us. You know what creates the fear from people from coming into these doors? They're gonna judge me. They're gonna reject me. You go, well, why would you think that? Because that's all you do on Facebook. That's what you talk about. That's what you promote. That's what you spend your time doing. And listen to me, you, if you watch all this stuff, if you feed all of that stuff in your life, here's what scripture, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So if you're speaking judgment, if you're speaking condemnation, if you're shaming those who are far from God, right? Listen, when did we start to think that people who don't know Jesus should act like Jesus? When did we start to think that people who, who, who are way left in the liberal political space would have the values that you have if they don't have Jesus? And government's not going legis- to legislate morality. They're not going to share the gospel. Sure, you can vote for people that promote the value. You should do those things. But listen, it's not their job. It's your job my job and so if your heart is hardened to the loss if you spend more time judging them and criticizing them than you do praying for them then the problem is not them it's the problem is you the problem is me so what do you got to do you got to say God give me your heart for people because can I tell you something God doesn't judge them like that 
that God's heart is broken over his kids who are lost? Think about if your child were to be lost. Think about your child as they grow up in the years and they become a prodigal and they leave the faith and they, they leave God and they walk away from knowing him and they walk away from relationship with you and they reject any kind of love that you send towards them. They go, I don't want anything to do with you. Would your heart be broken over your child? You would weep daily. God, please bring him home. God, bring my kid back. The father, man, throughout scripture, God is described as a father. Jesus said, you can call him dad. Like he's, that's the type of God that he is. That's the type of God he desires. And his kids are lost and wandering. And Jesus said, we talked a couple weeks ago that, that they're sheep without a shepherd. And Jesus' heart was not moved to judgment. It wasn't moved to condemnation. And he was the son of God. He was the holy of holies represented on earth. And Jesus didn't say, look at everything wrong with you. It said his heart was moved to compassion for those who are wandrously, hopelessly searching for the love of God. His heart is broken over the lost. And we need to ask God to break our hearts for lost people. Look, these two, they were willing to share their story, but you gotta have a story to tell first. And then they were willing to be a bringer. A Samaritan woman, right? Come and see. Come and see, right? Come and see what he's done. And if we look back at Andrew's story a little bit in Luke chapter five, we see that it wasn't just his brother that he brought, man. It was, it was lots of different situations where, where, where Andrew didn't necessarily know what to do, but he, know, he knew who to bring him to. When he was called, and Luke, in his version of this, he, he calls replies to Simon and Andrew was there with them. Don't be afraid. Listen, now you're gonna be fishing for people and as soon as they landed, right, they left everything and followed Jesus. That once they had an encounter with Christ, they're literally, for these guys, their whole life changed. Their career changed. Their, where they lived changed. They just began to follow Jesus and Jesus tells them, you're not gonna be fishing for fish anymore. You're gonna be fishing for men. You're gonna be seeing lost people. So there was something that when, when it was called, Andrew answered this call to discipleship. He knew now what his job was, and, and so he goes all in in this, and, and he has this assignment to, to seek and save lost people, because that's what Jesus was. And Frank, can I just tell you, once you come to know Jesus, that, that you have the same assignment? To seek and save lost, to share your story, to be a bringer of people to Jesus? And our styles and our opportunities and our circles of influence all are different, but we are each responsible to develop a discipline in our life of, of bringing people to Jesus. In fact, you guys remember the miracle where Jesus feeds thousands of people with, with five loaves of, of bread and two fish in John 6, eight through nine. Look, look who it was. Then Andrew, Simon's Peter's brother, and here's what, what I love about Andrew. Anytime they talked about Andrew, they always said this was just Peter's brother. Look, everywhere we're reading it. And Simon, Andrew, all that, who, who, who was it? Like they had to remind people, who was Andrew? Like he was that insignificant amongst the 12 that they always just had to say, and then and you ever think Andrew was like, look, it wasn't for me, Peter wouldn't even know Jesus. I brought him to Jesus. Thank you, you know, like, so every time. And here he is again, being a part of one of the greatest miracles that we see in, in Jesus' ministry that we still talk about to this day. And it says this, that there was this boy, and, and, and Peter, Andrew, goes and gets this young boy, and what does he do? He goes, they're looking for food, right? Jesus is saying, you're gonna feed all these people, and they're going, we don't have any food, there's thousands of people. And Andrew goes like this, well, there's, this is all we found. It's one boy, and he brought a lunch. And he's got a few pieces of bread and a couple fish. But here's what Andrew knew to do. He knew that he needed to bring this boy to Jesus. And he brings him to Jesus that Andrew trusted in Jesus' supernatural capabilities. This serves as a powerful lesson to you and I that no matter how small of a gift we think we have, one, that God can multiply it and use it to make a tremendous difference. But two, we think like this, I wanna be a bridge builder, but these people are so far from God and his values and embracing 
biblical truth and values in life. There's just no way. Look, that's not up to you to decide. You're just supposed to be like Andrew. Look, I don't, I don't see. I, they'll, they'll never come to church. They'll never. They're so far from God, they'll never do that. Look, Peter could have, Andrew could have walked up to this boy and go, this isn't enough? This will never accomplish its purpose. No, he didn't do that. He said, well, all I know is that, that Jesus can do a lot with a little. And you may plant a small seed, an invitation, an invite to something, a, a, a moment where you just say, hey, I, I just want you to know I'm thinking about you. I want to encourage you. I'm, God put you on my heart today. I, I could tell you stories right now, but because people watch these things, I can't tell you all of my stories, but it's just little things. It's just little things, little seeds, little plants in them, and, and man, God begins to do something with them. Andrew understood that, that, that look, I don't know what this boy can do, but I know if I can bring him to Jesus, that Jesus can do a lot with him. He was a bringer. John chapter 12, it said some Greeks had come into Jerusalem for the Passover celebration. They had heard about Jesus, and so they paid a visit to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and it said this, sir, we want to meet Jesus. And here's, here's the coolest thing about me, that even Philip knew Andrew's a bringer. So Philip told Andrew about it. Philip didn't go, oh, I know exactly what to do. I'm going to bring you to Jesus. They went to Andrew, and Andrew said, well, we don't know what to do for these guys. But guess who does? Jesus. So I'm going to bring them to Jesus. He was a bridge builder, friends. Whether it was a small boy who, who, who could provide a miracle for thousands of people that today we're still talking about. Whether it's just some Greeks that we don't even have their names. But he brought them to Jesus. And Andrew's response was indicative of his inclusive mindset. He was just always thinking, who can I bring? How can I get them to Jesus? That, that there was an appeal about Jesus' message, that, that there was a power that he had that, that Andrew knew, if I can just get them to Jesus, he'll do something powerful, impactful in their life. Andrew was the bridge to someone's Salvation and this someone ended up being Peter, his brother, who ended up being the, the foundation, the pillar, the rock that Jesus built the New Testament church upon. He, he understood how to, how to bring someone to be a bridge builder, to, to, to provide a miracle for someone, for many people. He, just, he was a bridge builder for someone's miracle. And then he was a bridge for people who were far from God, these Greeks who wandered in. They, they were far. They, who are these people? They, they're not Jews. They don't know about the Messiah, but here, here they are. Come meet Jesus. And here's our number one excuse that we all use. Well, that's Andrew. He was, he was, he was Simon Peter's brother. That's who he was. And you go, well, God can't use me. I don't know the Bible well enough. I don't know how to lead someone through scripture. I don't know how to, how to teach them about this. I don't know how to lay out the, that Jesus is the Messiah and prove to them that he's the son of God the way that, I don't know how to do this. Neither did the Samaritan woman. She just met him, she wasn't a biblical scholar. Neither did Andrew. He was just a fisherman. What did they do? They had an encounter with Jesus. They experienced his power for themselves. They shared their story with others. And then this is what they did. They said, come and see for yourself who Jesus is. And Jesus made this promise to you and me in John 14, 12. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me, what's the, what's the prerequisite? Belief, trust in Jesus, following Jesus can do the same works that I have done, even greater works, because I'm going to be the Father, and he says, I'm gonna send the Holy Spirit. That God can and will use you to be a bridge to lost people in your life. You gotta believe it. You have a story, and I pray that it's a story we're sharing, that it's a story we're telling, that you yourself have had an encounter with Jesus that's changed your life, and you can't help but tell other people about it that you too can be a, big, be a bringer of people. Because that's what the church is here for. We're here to help. We've created this place. We've, we've built a culture here with great intentionality to be a place that anybody can come. 
that on any given Sunday you would feel comfortable inviting a friend and someone who's far from God, and someone who's struggling, that you, you feel comfortable bringing them here knowing that no one's going to judge them, no one's going to reject them. You may go, I've never would have thought that in my life. Friends, I've worked at churches where literally the crusty Christians would tell people that they were sitting in their seat. Hey, excuse me, glad you're here today. You just happened to sit in my seat. Thank God that's not this place. That this place will always be a place that I promise you that everything we do will be done with thinking of your friend, thinking of your family member, and knowing that you've been building a bridge for a long time and they finally said yes to come and see, and you're going, man, I hope today's the day. Friend, that's what I think about every time I prepare a message, every time we go through a service, that's what we're always thinking about, to be a place that that can happen. And as the band comes and we close out, we wanna be a place that you feel comfortable saying, hey, come and see Jesus here. Now look, you can say come and see anywhere. Hopefully you can say come and see him in my living room, come and see him in my life, come and see for yourself, see Jesus in me. But friends, this is a place that you can say come and see here. There's a seat for you. And that's why we invite. That's why invite has always been a value here at our church. We believe that God has called you to invite others to be a part of his kingdom to invite them to meet Jesus. And it was really when we started the church and before there was a, a video of Penn Jillette. Does anybody know who Penn Jillette is? He's a, a magician. They had a show in Vegas, the Penn and Teller show, and he was a magician. And he would do these shows, he was an actor, and he's a well-known atheist. And he would do these shows and he would oftentimes call people from the audience to interact with them. And just one day he called up a Christian to interact with him. And they do this whole bit and skit with them and afterwards they always let them come back and meet him and take a picture and, and he had a Gideon's Bible that he carried with him and he wrote this message in it and he didn't read exactly what he said but whatever it was, whatever he said, it moved Penn Jillette in a, in a, in a very profound way and he's, he's just recapping the night. He's having this video that he must have done many times after shows and he's saying, but tonight something was different. There was this guy and, and I don't believe what he believes. I, don't, I think he's crazy for what he believes, but he was a genuine man. I could tell that there was just something different about him and I could tell that he, he genuinely loved me. And he says this, he says, I don't believe what he believes, but it got me thinking. He said, if you're a Christian and you believe that Jesus is the only way to eternal life, that without putting your faith in Jesus, that you will live a life separated from God forever and eternal punishment for your sins because you didn't accept Jesus' sacrifice for your sins. You are paying for them themselves, that you will spend eternity away from God forever in hell. He goes, if you believe that and you don't tell someone that, he goes, how much do you have to hate that person? If you really believe that and you don't tell someone, about that, how much do you really have to hate someone to not tell them? You see, there's too much at stake because hell is a reality. Hell is where people go. And God doesn't want people to go there so much so that he sent Jesus to die so that they wouldn't have to. But if they die without knowing Jesus and putting their faith in Jesus and receiving the sacrifice for, for their sins, that they will then have to pay for them themselves. You and I have an opportunity to be the ones that lead people to Jesus. You see, have you ever had moments in your life where you try to tell the story of something and it just doesn't do it justice and eventually people are kind of looking at you like, man, I'm not really following what you're saying and then you just get to the point where you go, well, you just had to be there, right? You just had to be there. I believe that about the local church. I believe that about this church, that Jesus is better experienced than he is explained. And what we're trying to create here is opportunities for people, not just encounter a couple good songs and a message and, no, 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 that every week that there's an opportunity for them to encounter and then experience Jesus. 
what are we challenging you to do? Be intentional with the relationships in your life. Look for opportunities to share Jesus with other people. It doesn't have to be complex. Just share your story. Share your story. I mean, this is what Jesus has done for me. Hey, I, I hear what you're saying about your husband. I hear what you're going through. I hear how that may be a challenge and what you're going through with your kids. Hey, let me, let me tell you what's made a difference for me. My faith. My belief in God. It's sustained me. It's given me hope. And, and if you have questions about that, if you'd ever want to come with me to church, and, but I'd encourage you to come and see. Just come and see. And you know what? You can sit with me. Come on, is it? Here, this is, this is simple. Listen for opportunities. People will say things. Um, things aren't going well. I, I wasn't prepared for. We're not in a church. We haven't found a church. We haven't found it, right? There's these things. Just listen to these things. Not, I'm not in church right now. Or things aren't going well in my life. We weren't prepared for this when it happened. And you can go, oh, oh, really? Really? Well, maybe you should come to church with me this Sunday. Come and see. And you know what? You can sit with me. Come on, say with me. Come and see. Sit with me. Come and see. And sit with me. That's what Andrew did. That was it. Hey, come and see. Peter, come on. You got to come. Hey, no, what? I, we don't know what Peter, Peter might have been. Hey, Andrew, get out of here, man. I'm busy. I'm tired. No, no, I said he brought him. All right, you ever bring someone? Come on. No, you're coming, dude. I don't. You're coming. Come. He brought him. Samaritan woman. Come and see this man. But here's what I love. In verse 42, it said this, they, that these people, it said many had become believers. And they said to the Samaritan woman, now we believe not just because of what you said, but because of what we heard ourselves. Because of what we've experienced, man, I believe that your experience was authentic, man. Your story was compelling, but I don't just believe because of what I've seen in you. I know without a fact that I indeed saw the Savior of the world, right? You see, her simple come and see turned into them seeing for themselves who Jesus was, that her encounter with Jesus led to their encounter with Jesus. Come on, I'm believing that this could be your friend. Hey, I went because of what you said, but I don't just believe because of what you said, I mean, I believe because of what he's done in me. That I've encountered him myself. So today, someday, you're gonna stand before God and you're gonna give an account to God. That's what this whole series has been about, for what you did with what he gave you, your time, your talent, your treasure, your energy, your resources, your gifts, all those things. You're gonna stand before God, he's gonna say, what did you do with what I gave you? And we all long and pray to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. But how cool would it be that when you get to heaven, it's not just well done and good and faithful servant, that there's a receiving line of people who say, because of you, I'm here. Because you said, come and see, because you invited, because you lived out your faith in a genuine and authentic way in front of me. I am here, my wife's here, my kids are here, my grandkids are here. Come on, someday you can get to heaven and hear, well done and thank you. Thank you for inviting me to come and see. Because Jesus changed everything. I'm gonna invite you just to bow your heads and close your eyes with me. And first, I wanna to talk to those of you who would say, you know what, I don't really have an experience with Jesus. I've never really encountered him in a way that's changed my life, that's given me a story that's worth telling. And today, man, I want you to have that. I want you to have your own experience with Jesus. The Bible says all of us are separated from God, but God so loved you that he sent Jesus into this world to die for you. And the cross of Jesus, again, it was a bridge builder for you so that you could know God for yourself. And today, if you'll come before him with a repentant heart and a humble spirit and say, God, I'm sorry, I've drifted from you. I'm so far from you. I'm seeking pleasure and fulfillment and all the wrong things. And today, God, I wanna just serve you. I wanna, I wanna have an experience with you where I invite you to change me from the inside out. It starts with you just saying, God, I'm sorry. And God, I want what you have for me. If you'll do that, God will meet you right where you are today. 
His grace is available, his mercy is available, his forgiveness is available if you're just willing to receive it. So today, if that's where you're at, I'd love to pray with you. And I believe that there's something powerful that happens when we respond physically to what God is speaking to us. So I'm just gonna invite you at this time to say, Kyle, that's me, I'm far from God. Just slip up your hand right now. I'm gonna pray for you, but just say that's where I'm at. I need my own experience, my own encounter. I see you over here, thank you. I see you over here, thank you. Who else? I want my own experience with him today. He loves you, friend. His grace is here for you. He's inviting you. Come and see. Come and see. Jesus said, come and see that I'm good. Taste for yourself. Drink of what I offer you. It will fulfill you. Anyone else? That's me. Amen. Amen. Church family, would you pray this with those who are praying this today? Say, dear Jesus, today I invite you in. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. I believe that you're the son of God, that you died for me so I can live for you. I surrender all that I am to you and your plan. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, can we thank God for that today? It's awesome. I'm gonna invite the rest of you to stand and I just wanna encourage you as we close out, our prayer team is gonna make their way to the back and maybe there's just someone that God's even put on your heart today that you're going, man, I wanna pray for this person. And here's my challenge to the church that we got three months left in this year, three months, 90 days. Who is one person? See, our value here is everyone can reach someone. God's not calling you to reach everyone, but he is calling everyone to reach someone. And that there's people in your life who you know need Jesus. And I just, here's it. Man, invite everyone, but come on, bring someone. Bring someone. To church, to to a service, to a life group, to to group connect, to say, hey, come with me. Hey, things aren't going well. We weren't prepared for. We're not in church. Listen, pay attention. Say, just come and see. Will you come and see? The end of this month, we'll have Fall Fest on the 29th in Kid Venture. It'll be an easy invite. Hey, you should bring your kids. They're going to wear their costume, they're gonna have fun and have a fun day and you can come to church and just see for yourself, right? And as we know, Christmas is coming up. Christmas is even more of an outreach than, than Easter. More people are open to coming to church and, and meeting Jesus than any other time before. I've been reading this week evangelistic studies that, that despite what, what may seem like it's happening in our world, that people are more open to the gospel right now than, than any time in recent years. They're just open. So I want you, as we close the song, one, to believe, come on, that God can can do something powerful. That God's been saving souls for thousands of years and he's not gonna stop now, right? He just needs bridge builders. He just needs bridge builders. He just needs people to bridge the gap between the lost and him. And friend, you get to be a bridge builder. And so I want you to pray. I want you to just think of one person, one family, go, God, I'm gonna do everything I can over the next 90 days to reach this person. Who is your one person that you would go, man, this is it. And I want you, even as we sing this song, one, to to let your faith rise up to go, man, they're so far from God, I just could never, believe, believe, believe. That's not your job to save them. Your job is to bring them to the one who can, okay? Just say, God, I wanna believe. So God, birth a new passion in my heart, a new desire in my heart. God, for the lost people who are far from you, and God, and for this one in particular, God, I'm gonna do all I can to be the come and see for them. Come and meet Jesus in them. So our prayer team's going back there. Maybe you wanna just go and pray with them and say, hey, I wanna pray for my friend. I wanna pray for my, my family member. I wanna pray for my parents, my sibling, whoever it may be, and say, I really wanna believe for this. Would you believe with me? And let's align our faith today. Let's sing this truth to God, and let's believe for him to be mighty to save the savior of the world amen father we thank you for this call and this commandment and we thank you that we don't do it alone god that you are with us that your spirit empowers us to be who you've called us to be and so i pray today god birth in our heart a new passion for people who are far from you god give us a desire to be the people to tell your amazing story we believe it today in jesus name